Welcome back to Don't Leave with Mary Crocker Cook. Today, we answer the question, why do I date the same person in a different outfit over and over again? So last time we met, we talked about the, uh, that we get the attachment that we offer in our relationships. So today, we're going to take a look at how those patterns form. So we're still in theory. We'll start out with a psychobabble alert. The caregiver provides a set of experiences of another person's ability to respond to us that creates an internal working model of attachment. This is the brain's way of making and summarizing experience. And it's natural for the brain to summarize, to anticipate future interactions with others. In many ways, it's a survival skill. What kind of ability do I have to get my needs met through my relationships? Our roadmap of relationships reflects the way our caregivers demonstrated the awareness of our signals, the ability to interpret their meanings, and responding in a timely manner. The model stays with the child throughout the child's life, but it's totally changeable. The model changes when experience changes, thus the word working. This is the hope of the model. It can be updated through experience and move us toward more security and trust. We aren't destined to shop for our partners at Savers Thrift Store. I promise. Our models come with strategies for forming future attachments with other people, conceptualized on a continuum of styles of protective and defensive behaviors based on our fear of rejection or abandonment or even perceived attempts to humiliate us. When caretakers are unavailable, children may develop a defensive strategy of dismissing or excluding certain emotions and experiences and primarily trust their thinking to read a relational situation. They avoid attachment. Alternatively, when caregivers are unpredictable, children may use coercive or clinging strategies and primarily trust emotion to read a relationship. They anxiously attach. When caregivers are scary and volatile, children may freeze or leave their bodies called dissociating in order to feel safe. Relational situations feel inherently unsafe. They have disorganized attachment. In all cases, we do not trust our relationships to continue and to meet our needs consistently. In all of these strategies, our thinking and emotions are no longer aligned, which interferes with our ability to accurately read the internal reality of ourselves and others. So you can see why vodka and gambling begin to make sense. Theorist Philip Flores believes that addicts, even before the addiction kicks in, struggle with knowing how to form emotional bonds to connect with other people. And this makes sense now, right? In general, when attachment insecurity in our early lives is disrupted or inhibited, the activation of other important systems like exploration and caregiving and sociability are also impaired. Fortunately, as we heal our capacity for attachment, we increase our ability to tolerate the anxiety that comes with exploration and caregiving and sociability. In fact, we might even start looking forward to it. In our next show, we will begin to look at the specific attachment strategies we may be using that are creating the patterns that we've been seeing in our relationship. So we'll see you then.